So approximately 10 years ago, I watched a few YouTube videos of someone playing The Last of Us. Actually, I think it was Markiplier. And I was so impressed that I decided to try to get my hands on the PlayStation 3. And I literally spent two weeks playing the game because it was just so, so good. And not even the gameplay, just the premise itself. The story, the idea behind it, and even the portrayal of these unusual fungi zombie. Or basically clickers. And you can probably imagine my excitement when I found out that they're also making a TV show. Oh yeah, there's also part 2 of the game, but I'm really behind the schedule on my games, so I haven't played that just yet. Anyway, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. So today we're going to be talking about the idea behind The Last of Us. The idea behind the fungal infection. And basically answering the question of, can this actually happen? Is there a possibility for an actual fungal infection that can infect humans, potentially turning us into zombies, or exhibiting other effects, possibly deadly to humans? And even though this might sound preposterous, you might already know where I'm going with this. Because this right here is kind of based on the real thing in nature. Not in humans, obviously, not even in complex mammals, but in insects. And if you know anything about the original game, The Last of Us, it was actually inspired by the episode from BBC. The episode that you see right here, as always, narrated by David Attenborough. And this actually shows us what happens to some of the ants infected by certain fungi as they literally turn into a kind of a zombie, with the fungus then starting to grow, usually out of their head and a few other body parts, and eventually releasing spores, potentially infecting other ants or other insects depending on the fungus, with the family of these fungi known as the cordyceps. Although for these ants, the more specific name is Ophiocordyceps, a very specific fungus that parasitizes specific ants, with a single fungus only able to control a single species of ant. And because there are several fungal pathogens known to us that can actually change the behavior of the animal they infect, this idea might not really be that far-fetched after all. So let's discuss this from the perspective of science. And by the way, there are going to be no spoilers about the TV show or even the video game. I'm just going to be covering basic concepts. And a lot of these discoveries are somewhat recent. As a matter of fact, some of the first papers on this fungus and its effects on ants only started to come out about a decade ago, around the same time as the video game. Here's one paper you can find in the description. And in this paper, the scientists explored how Ophiocordyceps managed to evolve various types of compounds to influence various types of behaviors in specific types of ants. And what's intriguing is that they actually evolved really specific components that seem to do very specific things, usually divided into five separate steps. The first step seems to be relatively similar. The ant picks up some of the fungus that gets stuck on its skin, and the fungus slowly finds a way inside the ant's body by using various enzymes to break through its skin. The second part is a little bit more specific. It involves direct manipulation of the ant's behavior. The fungus does not actually infect the brain, but seems to develop a kind of a colony very close to the brain itself, which then starts to emit very specific metabolites that almost instantly start to affect the ant. And in almost all cases, in almost all species, the first thing that happens to the ant is a type of a convulsion, where the ant suddenly loses footing and basically falls to the ground. This happens in almost every case. Later on, the fungus kind of spreads in different ways. Some fungal spores end up in the mandible of the ants, or the mouth, Others end up in the muscles, with others still being close to the brain. And they all start to emit different metabolites, which start to affect pretty much everything the ant does. And following the convulsion, once the ant gets up, it generally starts to find a way to get above the forest floor. And what's super intriguing is that even the height here seems to be really specific. The scientists discover that it seems to prefer the height of about 26 centimeters above the floor, and seems to always prefer the northern side. It also prefers 95% humidity and a temperature of 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. And if it finds these conditions, it initiates the last step, known as the death grip, seen in the video by the BBC. It grabs onto the stem, bites really, really hard, way, way harder than usual, with the mandible staying fixed pretty much forever. And as soon as this happens, the fungi literally kill the ant, using the rest of its body for their own sustenance. With all of this done, just so that the spores can easily propagate through the air and potentially infect other ants or move elsewhere. So essentially this is a way that this particular fungus moves across the forest. So it's actually both the mobility strategy as well as the reproductive strategy. And we know that this strategy existed for at least 130 million years. 
The scientists literally discovered the signs of those mandibles biting into various leaves and various stems in a lot of different types of amber consisting of both ants and ancient plants. So this is a super ancient relationship. It's been around for a very long time. And that's a very important part of the answer to the original question. Can this happen to us? Or I guess, can this happen to us? Well, no, not really. Or at least very, very unlikely. If this could happen to us, or if this could happen to mammals, or really any more complex animals, it would have already happened in the last 130 million years. The ants and the fungi have been doing this for so long, that if the strategy was successful elsewhere, it would have already been applied to some other animal. As a matter of fact, fungi are also really dangerous to frogs, and they might even cause the extinction of several frogs in the future, but none of the frogs ever turn zombies. They do experience a lot of problems, but none of them are related to either behavior or their brain. And that's of course because ants compared to frogs are just way, way more simple. The brain of the frog and even the circulatory system is way, way more complex for anything to control as easily. But ants are really simple. As a matter of fact, this only takes about 4 to maximum 10 days to achieve, which is why it's so common in insects and is unlikely to happen in anything else. But ironically, this fungus that infects ants even has its own fungus, parasitic fungus, that seems to infect itself. So dangerous fungal infection in simpler species is definitely a lot more common. And so is the human brain just a little bit too complex for any of these fungi to infect us and to control our behavior? Well, actually, not really. As a matter of fact, we know of at least two different parasites that do manage this really well. And they are pretty simple as well. One of them is, of course, the rabies, the virus that actually affects the neural system, very often producing a lot of aggression, and almost always being fatal to humans. But the other one being something that not a lot of people are aware of, but a lot of people already have. Toxoplasma gondii. T. gondii for short. And this parasite, which by the way is going to have its own video, is something that we know for sure changes behavior in humans, changes behavior in a lot of more complex mammals, and as you might already know, or might not know, is actually spread by cats, and a lot of other felids as well. And this weird parasite has already been implicated in things like psychosis, in things like schizophrenia, and even things like risk-taking behavior. As a matter of fact, what makes this particular parasite really intriguing is that when it actually infects rats, it makes those rats less fearful and often makes them approach cats, which then ends up basically being fatal to them. But what effects this has on humans is actually still not really well understood. We know that it definitely has effects, but so far a lot of studies have been kind of inconclusive. Definitely subscribe if you want to learn more, as the video about this is coming soon. And so toxoplasmosis is a really good example of how humans can also be infected by something where our behavior can change. But we're not really talking about any parasite, we are really mostly focusing on fungi. Knowing what we know, can fungi do something similar? Can they actually turn us into these ants? Well, the answer here is still no, very unlikely. For several reasons once again. First reason is that atypical cordyceps only affects one single species of ant. If it infects another ant or another insect, the metabolites it produces usually have almost no effect. And they definitely have no effect on humans whatsoever. As a matter of fact, a lot of different Asian cultures even use these unusual fungi for a lot of different treatments in Eastern medicine. Creepy, but potentially beneficial. On top of this, in order to manipulate a human, the fungus would have to go inside our brains. But none of these fungi ever do. As a matter of fact, they always stay outside of the brain and simply produce metabolites. These metabolites would not be able to cross the blood-brain barrier inside human brains. So once again, probably unlikely. On top of this, humans have immune system, and our immune system would take care of any fungi inside our blood. Now in humans, we generally can get fungal infection on our skin, for example, athlete's food, but if it ever gets inside blood, the immune system takes care of it pretty quickly. We also breathe in a lot of different fungi as well, including different molds, and most of them do not do anything to us. Some of them, however, are kind of dangerous. Coccidial idomyosis, also known as the valley fever, is one such example. But generally, even when you inhale a fungus, it sort of dies because our bodies are pretty warm. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons why ants and amphibians get infected by fungi really easily, but not humans, is because of our body temperatures. Warm-blooded animals do not really suffer from fungal infections as much. This paper right here expands on this in more detail. And so our body temperatures also represent a huge barrier for a typical fungus infection that would try to control our brains. 
And so is it then a bit of a science fiction? Is it kind of impossible? Well, this is here where the answer gets a little bit more murky. We don't really know. As a matter of fact, we know that some fungi can actually manipulate our perception or even to some extent our behavior. For example, the famous magic mushrooms produce psilocybin that can cause hallucinations and alter human mind to the point where it actually alters our behavior. So at least in theory, fungi can find a way to maybe manipulate our minds and thus make us do things we don't want to do. On top of this, last year, World Health Organization released the first ever list of different fungi potentially dangerous to humans. And that's because in the last few years there actually has been an increase in fungal infections around the world. Maybe due to the climate change, maybe due to something else. But what's important is that it does actually increase the chance for some kind of a super pathogen. A super fungus that can establish itself in mammals or even humans. Possibly becoming extremely dangerous over time and obviously maybe even manipulating our behavior. Although more likely, if such pathogen does occur, it's just going to produce something really dangerous inside our bodies, but not really turn us into zombies. This is still way too complex for any fungus to achieve. And so can a cordyceps infection turn humans into zombies? Well, probably no. But can some kind of a fungus appear out of nowhere, possibly causing major infections around the world, or maybe even causing a new pandemic? Well, that is actually not so impossible. And that's why WHO released this particular paper, and why a lot of scientists are interested in studying this, because it's not in the realm of science fiction at all. Fungi can be dangerous, and many fungi have still not been discovered even today. And so definitely something that the scientists are taking seriously. But until new discoveries, check out that iconic video from ABC in the description below. Also, all of the relevant links and all of the relevant studies in the description as well. Subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, Come back tomorrow to learn something else and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye. Here comes the fungus. Oh man, this is so gross though. This one I really can't handle. Yeah, not this. Definitely not this.